एवरीवन आई शेफ संतोष मालकोटी फ्रॉम चितकारा स्कूल ऑफ हॉस्पिटैलिटी पंजाब कैंपस वेलकम यू ऑल इन द सेशन दिस सेशन इज इन कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द शाखोत्री टॉपिक व्हिच वी हैव कवर्ड इन द प्रीवियस सेशंस टिल नाउ अंडर द शाखोत्री टॉपिक वी हैव कवर्ड अ फ्यू टॉपिक्स लाइक द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ शाखोत्री लाइक क्योरिंग एंड स्मोकिंग एंड सॉसेजेस and in today's session you are going to learn about force meat which is very essential for the preparation of almost all shakutri products after the completion of the session you will be able to define force meat describe the various con- components of force meat and elaborate the preparation of force meat so let's start to start with the topic a force meat is basically a ground or pureed flesh which is combined with fat and seasoning and then bound by the process of emulsification or addition of other binders the french term for force meat is farce which indicates stuffing of meat or vegetables or even of bread most force meats are raw when being shaped piped or form some are fully cooked and then pureed prior to being used force meats can be either fresh or cured fresh force meats means that no nitrates are added cured indicates that the curing salt rich in nitrates have been added force meat of all types are used in hot as well as in cold kitchen force meat acts as a base for almost all shakutri products like pate terrine sausages and galantine force meat generally comprise of meat fat binding agent seasoning curing mix and garnishes meat it provides the character to the force meat and various kinds of meat can be used for this purpose pork lamb beef veal poultry game fish etc different meats has different flavors and textures and thus usage of a particular meat gives force meat distinct qualities the function of the meat is to provide the body the texture and the flavor to the force meat generally locomotion mu- muscles like shoulder and legs are used for imparting flavor and the tender muscles like tongue and liver they are used for garnishes fat contributes to flavor mouth feel binding power and texture to the force meat various kinds of fats are used for force meat preparation but the most preferred is pork fat as it has ideal melting point it melts in mouth resulting in good feel, mouth feel whereas lamb fat and beef fat are uh, little dense and they have little strong flavor because of which it is not preferred and uh, they also leave a waxy layer inside mouth once it is consumed whereas poultry fat it is very soft and it has low melting point which makes it little difficult for emulsification that is the reason it is not preferred when we talk about binding agent binding agent helps to bind the com- components of the force meat example of binding agents are panada and eggs panada is basically a paste prepared from flour bread rice or other starch products it aids in binding the fat it also lightens the density of the product it should not comprise more than the 20% of the total weight of the force meat eggs is the major contribution the binding power and a firmer texture eggs are not used in the sausage making seasonings serve a far greater function than simply addition and enhancement of flavor salt curing salt and various spices are being used salt is primarily primary ingredient which facilitates water retention and adds to the enhanced flavor curing salt helps to retain the natural color of the meat and also it inhibits the growth of the bacteria 
Spices are responsible for distinctive flavor of the various force meat. The classical force meat spices composed of white pepper powder, black pepper powder, bay leaf, paprika, marjoram, thyme, nutmeg, mace, ginger, etc. Garnishes may be added to the force meat after it is completed, that is, minced, chopped, or emulsified. There is a wide range of uh, garnishes which can be used for this purpose for example nut meats various kinds of mushrooms pistachio smoked tongue can be used for this purpose the garnishes are best partially cooked and cooled before being added to the force meat the basic purpose of using garnishes is to provide uh, distinct flavor contrast flavor and texture and it also helps you to improve the appearance of the force meat. This slide explains the basic of meat mincing process. When you want to grind meat, you need to make sure that the meat is chilled and even the parts of the grinder, they are also chilled. Set up the grinder or assemble the grinder, pass meat through the grinder and while grinding the meat the meat should extrude easily once it is minced you need to rechill the meat and even the parts of the grinder grind the minced meat second time using a smaller die to get finer minced meat this slide tells you about the progressive grinding if finer textured force meat is required the mixture is ground second time through a smaller die. This is called as progressive grinding. This slide shows the various parts of a meat mincer. All the parts of a meat mincer plays a very important role in mincing the meat. A feed stamper is basically a pusher which helps to push the meat through the feeding pan or bowl. A worm feed screw facilitates the meat to move towards the grinding ring which has grinding plates or dies and knife and the cylinder is the main body and which connects all the attachments together. The preparation of force meat can be broken down into six steps. First step, select the ingredients. Carefully select the ingredients which are to be used as the use of quality ingredients will lead to a quality product and assemble them before beginning. Second step, choose the right equipment. It is important to choose the right type of equipment. The most important are the grinder and the food processor. Third step, fabrication and grinding. Fabrication will include trimming of fat and silver skin and then cutting the meat into dices or strips. The cut meat and fat should be well chilled then it is allowed to marinate overnight with seasoning and curing mix. It is always advisable to grind the meat in small batches and maintain the temperature of meat between 35 to 50 degree Fahrenheit during the grinding process as it prevents the denaturing of the proteins. The marinated meat can be ground to a coarse texture first and then to a finer texture using a progressive grinding technique if required. Fourth step is molding, forming and stuffing. The force meat mixture should be tested by poaching a small quenel in lightly salted water to ascertain the correctness of the flavors, seasoning and binding and then it can be packed in terrines and pathe molds or it can be stuffed if desired. Fifth step is cooking. Force meats are cooked at low temperature like 150 to 180 degree Fahrenheit until it achieves an internal temperature of 140 to 170 degree Fahrenheit. The high temperature will denature the protein and it will lead to excessive coagulation which will result in a dry product. A force meat which is undercooked will result in a mushy and unstructured sliced 
product. Sixth step is handling and storage. The preparation of force meat and its usage calls for strict sanitary practice. There is a constant danger of cross-contamination of the various components of the force meat. The meats should not be exposed to the danger temperature zone that is 40 to 140 degree Fahrenheit. Once processed, they should be quickly cooled and held at safe temperature. Always fully dismantle the processing equipment and clean to remove all traces of meats. Chill everything involved in the processing. Once production is complete, store force meat covered and under refrigeration. By this, we come to an end of the session and in the upcoming session, we will discuss about the various types of force meat and its uses. It will help you to understand the concept of force meat in a detailed way. Thank you very much for watching the video. Stay safe.